I had met uh, just through socially uh, a Dr. Haresh Lalvani, who is the um, is many things: uh, mathematician, architect, designer, morphologist, virologist, biologist. Um, but I met him uh, through a friend, and he introduced me to the work he's been doing, which is private experimental uh, laboratory kind of work with a very renowned um, metal, art metal producer in Brooklyn, New York, called Milga Bafkin, that works with Anish Kapoor, worked with Richard Serra, etc. And the man who owns that factory, Bruce Gitlin, has funded Haresh's work for over 15 years to do uh, explorations with mathematical, using mathematical equations um, uh, involved in a digital production and digital uh, design. And when I was invited to sort of have a look around, um, I in my limited capacity started to understand and see something that I thought was amazing and uh, with their permission to propose a project which we could bring here to show uh, certain of these discoveries which I thought was uh, the best way to um, own them was to go public with them. Uh, So they trusted me, and the project we came up with is almost a kind of Dadaist uh, absurdity, which is to offer to, in our booth, 1,000 variations of a common fruit platter. An object, of course, where customization, uniqueness isn't in fact required or desirable. But I didn't want to confuse the process that we hoped it would reveal with an application, a proposal for an application which is much too pro profound to include in this one offering. So what we have is a thousand variations of, of a steel fruit bowl, um, which we realized 100 of them to bring to the fair because of the size of the booth limitations. And we created an animation, a DVD, which uh, illustrates the, morph, the morphing from one pattern to the next of the thousand. We drew the line at the thousand, although in fact this one algorithm fed to the computer for this fruit bowl crashed after one billion different designs. And that would mean if we changed the algorithm slightly, another crash would occur in a new billion patterns. So our first hope was to our first desire was to expose the fact that all patterns in the universe can now be seen. So it's in that sense a geology project. It means that nothing, these have always been there, we all knew it, but we believe you can now map, discover, unearth every pattern in the universe. So the first thing I wanted to do was to make a, a, a thousand different patterns which is already beyond our human level of evolution to discern between those patterns at this moment um, to show what are we going to do with all this pattern. The other phenomena is that this 15-year relationship, experimental relationship, meant that digital production, robotic production, whatever one might want to call it these days, made in tandem with the uh, digital design means that there is no economy of scale. In other words, these fruit bowls cost the factory no more money to make all different than to make all the same, which is an enormous, um, profound change in possibility because what it means is that standardization is actually no longer required.
And this is not an art project. This is a real project where it costs no more to make a thousand different than a thousand the same. What that questions that raises to uniqueness, limited edition, the values that we give based on that criteria solely, we'll see. But the marriage of those two is what this project is about. Well, I believe that, first of all, they, they look like beautiful objects. But let's say they're the equivalent of the snowflake. They are unique moments still, like in a film analogy, still shots from an ongoing movie. And I believe that the patterns that are, we've created in the fruit bowl exist somewhere on some things somewhere in nature. The other thing that we hope to address as a sort of sidebar was in the design of the booth, I wanted human intelligence, which is sloppy. Uh, we go backwards, we forget, we add something, you go forwards, you cross out, you write. I wanted that to look nice and cohabitate and play nicely together with artificial intelligence because we did not want to arrive in a spaceship we didn't want to characterize this as something frightening and futuristic, but something that in fact has always, geometry has always been a part of architecture. The Goth, great Gothic cathedrals were built using our um, geometry. So we wanted it to look friendly. A number of people find we, we've, a lot of it has to do with the way we regard the computer. We've kept it as, as sort of servant status because of our fears are sort of that it become Orwellian. And I think that we've asked it to do so much that it's time to allow it to accept it as a creative agent and that it doesn't rob us of our humanity. We control that creativity and in fact We've allowed it, we've built it, we've made it possible. So we need to, to go that next step, which means that people from different disciplines other than form-giving design schools, but people, perhaps musicians, mathematicians, numerologists, will become designers.